So, Catherine, uh, you presided over some drunk watching, I think, of the State Union Address at the Reason uh, DC HQ. Uh, what was your overall policy vibe of the thing? And then please, if you will, lead us into drilling down into specific policies that Biden talked about or unveiled at a State of the Union Address. Yeah, I just want to, first of all, clarify, I, I led drinking watching of the State of the Union, but not drunk watching of the State oh, okay. of the Union because we are professionals here. Even the Billy Binion? DC office, especially Billy Binion. Okay. And um, my, the overall vibe policy-wise was, was absolute, perfect, pure forgettability. Like if it wasn't my job to remember some policy proposal that occurred in that State of the Union, I would remember nothing. It was sort of the casual laundry list. It was a bunch of stuff we've heard before. It was, and this is what most of the unions are like now, but it, this one was particularly unremarkable, not only because no one was watching for policy, everyone was just watching to see if grandpa could keep it together past bedtime, but also because there is no policy. Policy is over. We don't do policy anymore in this country, really. So um, that was that was not a surprise, I guess. Um though still a bummer. So to be clear, you can't name a single one. I can, and I will, but again, yeah. I, it, only because it is, I literally get paid to do yeah. this. Um, so the policy that jumped out at me was when he said, truly in his best like infomercial voice, uh, when you refinance your home, you can save $1,000 or more. Like, first of all, what? Like the State of the Union, I, you know, I don't love it that like numbers having to do with the government now mostly start with T's and B's. Like it's all trillions and billions. It's just like large, large, large amounts of money. Ideally, those numbers would be smaller. But $1,000 is too small of a number to talk about in the State of the Union. That is infomercial stuff. Um, I do not own a house. Uh, God willing, I will never own a house. So I did have to go figure out what exactly was going on here. And I did. Um, which is that title insurance is a complicated uh, thing, but it turns out that this actually kind of might be goodish in that it's a, like a wee smidge of deregulation. So basically, lenders have to buy insurance against the possibility that the house that you are um, borrowing money from them to buy might be like, oops, owned by someone else or like have a tax lien on it or something. Um when you are refinancing a home that has already gotten title insurance on it through the previous lender, you don't have to buy that again anymore by law, at least some of the time. That's it. This couldn't be less interesting or important. I'm so sorry I even talked to you about it. Was, but like, I, I'm even wow. sorrier that he talked to us about it. I think that should be it. done at the UN level, not at right? the Right. I mean, government. right? Like, let's have the one world government decide this because it's just as it makes just as much sense as Joe Biden having a single thought about this. The banks themselves should obviously choose whether or not they need insurance on properties that they're lending against. That's an easy answer. Um, I yeah, I now regret that this was the assignment that I this created. is this is what oh, was in I, there boring fiddly shit. Uh, 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 Nick, what uh, uh, what was your overall uh, like policy vibe check? Was it basically similar to Catherine's about old uh, President Corn Pop? And then on your specific one, um, is it going to have something to do with Snickers? Uh, no, but uh, I mean, obviously, he needed to eat the Snickers before, during, and after to change into Betty White. Uh, I liked the vibe of it. And I'm thinking, I now think of uh, Joe Biden as Joey Pep. He is like Neil Cassidy or, you know, Dean Moriarty and uh, on the road, or, you know, you could see him driving the Merry Prankster bus now, like hopped up on speed because he came out all shouty and, shouty and animated. I like that. I like that Biden. And I like the fact that he immediately attacked Trump. Uh, you know, he, he went into Ukraine, he went into Trump, he, uh, et cetera. I thought that was uh, pretty good. Like Catherine, the speech was, you know, god awful in its substance for the most part. But the other thing he did and, and like yeah, he was smart because he did this all in about the first three minutes. He also brought up abortion, um, although in a cowardly act, did not use the word abortion. I wish he had. But he said, you know what? Um, if, you know, when I get a second term, the actual line was, I will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again, which I took to mean that he is going to, you know, push for national legislation that would, in, you know, in, create the uh, framework that was at work 
uh, under Roe on a national level. And he also said in this, you know, what was interesting about this State of the Union, I think, compared to others, it was very political and it was very aimed at the uh, 2024 election. And he said, you know what? Republicans did this. Trump alone did this. It was his judges who did this. And every time this stuff came up on the ballot, they lost, you know, and if they can take away this right, what are the rights they're going to do? I think that's like actually, I, I, you know, it's actually good politicking. Um, so I found that uh, all somewhat interesting. Um, but then, you know, as the speech went on, you kind of, and this happens if you take a lot of amphetamines, you know, it just kind of becomes an endless whir and buzz. And, um, you know, uh, but uh, Joey Pep, you know, he uh, he brought it back. Now he's got to he's got to continue to make this character appear on a regular basis. I think he's got to do the uh, the push up competition with Robert F. Kennedy. Um, and he's got to be chopping some wood or something like that in the, uh, maybe he can wash the Corvette in front of the white house, Matt, and take his shirt off and kind of only like if be, he's wearing Daisy Dukes. That's yeah, of course. Th- those are the rules. And work boots, of course. Like, but what else would you wear when you're washing the car in front of the white house? So <laughs> Joey Pep is back. Uh, there's so many images that I want to scrub from my memory already in this short period of time in this and, and Heaton has barely spoken. Uh, so that's, yeah. that's I'm, I'm minding my manners. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, now stop minding your manners <clears throat> and start telling us uh, your uh, overall impression of the State of the Union and one specific policy that you thought was noteworthy of comment. OK, Andrew. Uh, so kickoff, I, I hate State of the Union addresses. I know that this is a, a, a common opinion. Uh, quick fun fact. Since we're basically emulating the monarch's address over in the United Kingdom, we ought to just go full throttle on that, in my opinion. Like, they have wonderful pageantry. The, the king takes a hostage every year uh, that, that sits at Buckingham Palace. It is a literal hostage in case Parliament takes control of the king. Uh, and so we should do that. We, there should be a hostage at the White House. They have to take Marjorie Taylor Greene and put her in the green room or something. And uh, they have a representative of the king go to the House of Commons where a door is ceremonially slammed in the guy's face. And then they go to the House of Lords. But, and this is the crucial bit that I wish they would do with the American president, they make the king sit in a vestibule for a few minutes and just stare at the death warrant of Charles I. They make him stay in a little room with a a placard on the wall talking about the time they cut a guy's head off. I think that that would be very beneficial. Um, I agree with everybody's assessment about the... Uh, the just lack of substance in it. it. I thought the State of the Union address was kind of like a bag of potato chips where 80 percent of it's just air and then the bottom 20 percent of it is just empty calories. Of the remaining parts that were there, the the stuff that I thought was noteworthy that I could actually stay uh, awake for and pay attention to, um, whenever Biden got into economics, it he, he got down into his real essence, which is if, if there's a grease fire, throw more grease at it. If student loans cost too much, we should be paying for more student loans. Never really getting into, well, why is that? That These things that the federal government is already funding tend to be increasing in money. Well, give, give them more money. Although he, he did have a couple of things that I liked, um, little bits. Uh, he, he talked about having good jobs in high school that don't require college degrees, kind of alluded to an apprentice program. I liked that. Um, he uh, appears to have turned positions on marijuana very briefly. Okay, maybe that'll turn into something at some point. He does seem to have directed, uh, I think, the FDA to review scheduling for marijuana. So maybe there's some positive things on that end. Uh, and one or two other things. But but broadly speaking, I thought it was uh, kind of a just nice of Congress to let the old man give a campaign speech and uh, not a whole lot of meat in it. That was a clip from the Reason Roundtable podcast. To watch more clips, go here. To watch the whole show, go here and subscribe to the Reason Roundtable wherever you get your podcasts.